Hi, I'm Cathy Balding. Welcome to the ISQA Masterclass on the basics of quality improvement. These are the things I wished I'd known when I started out 20 years ago. To talk about the basics of quality improvement today, we're going to use a modified version of the Plan, Do, Study, Act cycle because it's quite a useful framework when we're talking about the tools and skills that are most useful to all quality managers, the essentials of their toolkit. And it's a helpful framework on two levels because it describes the sorts of things that you need to be able to do when you're helping someone in your health service to improve something that they do. It's equally helpful when we're looking at the broader, big picture, organisation-wide quality system that you may be responsible for setting up or developing or enhancing. So although today we'll be focused more on the helping people with their individual improvements, it is a very useful framework for both. The tools are essentially the same, but the scale is quite different. The other reason I guess I thought using the PDSA cycle would be good is because it's also a change cycle. And change is an absolutely fundamental skill for each and every quality manager. We have four key steps to improvement. You see the consumer at the pinnacle of this diagram and your skills and knowledge sitting underneath that helping people at the front line of your organisation to improve what they do to create that great experience for consumers. The first step is where do we want to go? How do we define what it is we want to achieve for each consumer and put a good, practical, effective plan in place to achieve it? The second is where are we now? Where are we starting from? And that's the analysis of our current situation. The third is start the journey. That's about implementation. Get those strategies in place, get some measures to make sure that we're on the right track and just do it. Step four is are we heading in the right direction? How are we going to evaluate all of these strategies and all of this good work to see if it's taking close, us closer to our goal of achieving great care for our consumers. Step one is all about planning and it's a step that isn't always done as well as perhaps it should be. It's a step that sometimes isn't done at all and people in health are doers. They are very task focused, they like to get on with the job, they like to achieve. And so planning can seem, oh well, perhaps a little dull. A step that takes us further away from getting stuck into it and making things happen. But it is incredibly important. And certainly over the years, there's been many, many times that I wished I'd done better planning. And there have been many times that I've seen others that wish they had done better planning, both for their individual improvement activities, but also for their broader quality improvement system across their organisation. So this absolutely applies equally to both of those. So this is the where do we want to go step. Sometimes this is a result of step two, which is where are we now? So sometimes an individual improvement activity, of course, will arise from a gap or a problem that you've identified as part of your monitoring activities, perhaps as the result of an accreditation assessment, or an external evaluation of something that you do, or feedback from your consumers, or feedback from your staff. There are many ways, of course, to identify where you might want to improve. But it doesn't matter where it comes from, the planning is still important. And the first thing that you absolutely positively have to do in the planning process is to create that vision for change. And the vision for change, once again, is something that you don't often see in quality. And that vision is as simple as saying, what will things look like when we've done this? 
What will they look like every day? How will the consumer experience our services differently? How will staff come to work differently every day? What will they have to do that's different? How will it affect them? And getting that described in as much detail and colour and movement as you possibly can. And there's a number of reasons for this. The first is that staff are much more likely to want to be a part of something that they can see and feel and imagine, particularly if it's something that takes them somewhere better than they are now and that takes their consumers somewhere better than they are now. And that saves you from having to do so much pushing for staff engagement and involvement. And of course, that's one of the absolute key things that I hear quality managers complaining about all the time, because a good vision helps pull staff towards where it is that you want to go. It also helps clarify exactly what you're trying to achieve. We often start with plans that are based on ideas and not really solid, concrete pictures of how things will be different. So helping us define exactly what we want to achieve is useful because then we tend to make better plans for achieving it. Our plans tend to be more concrete and practically based because we have a concrete goal or destination that we want to reach. And of course, it makes your improvement much easier to evaluate. People always are complaining to me that evaluation is difficult and one of the reasons I think it is difficult is because we don't clearly articulate exactly what it is we're trying to achieve and so it's quite difficult to evaluate whether you achieve something if you haven't first clearly articulated what that was. Now I know that sounds very obvious but I'm sure that you also know that many times this is not done well and then evaluation becomes quite difficult uh, because it's a where do you start thing rather than something that's built in right from the word go. So goals are generally big picture things. Objectives are your specific components of that goal, the things you absolutely need to do to achieve that goal. And I think a good way of remembering what an objective is, is to think about what is the end product for the consumer? What are we trying to achieve for this consumer? And to think about that in a very measurable way. So goals, I think, must be SMART. And I know SMART is an acronym that many of you will be familiar with, but it is about being specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. And they are very important components of a good objective. Well worth taking the time, I think, to create objectives that fulfill all of those criteria. So for example, a goal uh, might be something like, uh, we are committed to making our services uh, as accessible as possible for every consumer. That is a fantastic goal. And an objective that might uh, help describe one of the components of achieving that would be reduce waiting time in outpatient clinics to a maximum of 15 minutes within one year. So that's very clear, it's very specific, it's got a, a, a time set around it and we know exactly what we're shooting for. Goals are definitely not to raise awareness or to increase education attendance or all of the sorts of good things that I often see passing for goals and objectives. These things are strategies, these things are things that you may do to achieve your goals and objectives, but in and of themselves they are not goals and objectives. So always go back to what is it we're doing for the consumer, how will we be able to count that how we will we be able to see it and touch it and feel it? What will the difference be? And those things are your objectives. Step two. And as I said before, sometimes this step comes before step one. Sometimes your plan for action 
emanates from identifying something that is less than optimal, a gap, a problem. And the analysis of where you are now is critical to successful improvement. But as I said before, not often as well done as we would like because people want to get on with it. Starting on an improvement activity without first clearly analysing where you're starting from, to me is like asking a pilot to fly to London without telling them where they're starting from. It would be quite a difficult thing to work out the best way of getting there if you don't know where it is you're starting and the hazards along the way, how far it is, how much fuel you might need to take. There's so many things that you need to consider as a pilot to make that journey. And similarly, there are so many things you need to consider as a quality manager helping others to improve what they do when you want to be taking them on that journey. So you absolutely need to know where you're starting from. And some of that will come from data. You'll look at quantitative data, the measures that tell you how well things are being done now. You'll look at qualitative data, you'll get feedback from different people that will give you a good idea of where things are at. But most importantly, and something else that perhaps we don't do as well as we might in healthcare quality, you need to talk to the people who will be affected by that change. You need to observe how it is they do things today if you want them to do something different tomorrow. And the thing about that is we know in the complex systems that are uh, our healthcare organisations, things on the floor are very seldom done exactly as the policy or procedure might say. So you need to start where they are, not where you are, or not where you hope they are, given the policies and procedures in place, because it may not be like that. So go out, observe, talk to people, find out how things are really done, and then you're ready to start the journey. Step three is about starting the journey. It's about implementation. And always test your change first. We have fairly good evidence now that short cycle tests or pilots are really the way to go in the complex system that is your healthcare organisation. So for example, if we take that, um, that waiting time example that I mentioned before, if you want to reduce that clinic waiting time, you'll develop your strategies based on where you're starting from and where you want to go and you might pilot that in one clinic first rather than trying to change all the clinics at once. And just see how you go. You may also develop sub-objectives to help you on your journey. So if reducing that clinic waiting time to 15 minutes is a stretch goal compared to where you are now, you might start by saying, well, in clinic A, we're going to get it down to 40 minutes and then we're going to get it down to 15 minutes in Clinic A, and then we're going to take the lessons from that experience and spread it across the other clinics. Ensure you're working with those affected by the change. I know I've said this several times now, but I couldn't uh, make this point more strongly um, if I tried. What I often see in the change aspect of implementation is people engaged sometimes as a last resort, sometimes after the change is well on its way, sometimes they're not engaged at all. Some people receive an email or a memo telling them that things will be different on Monday uh, than they are today on Friday, and then those people have to scramble to try and catch up. So you can't expect that uh, involvement and engagement in the change um, if they're not part of your thinking and your planning and your strategizing from day one. And clarify their roles and responsibilities. Engagement is one of those things where we often say everyone is responsible for making this change work. And whilst that is true, it's very important to allocate very specific roles to people and to play to their strengths. Some people are fantastic at reorganizing a process. Some people are fantastic at spreading the word. Some people collect great data. Some people do fantastic presentation of data. Find out what people are good at. Play to their strengths 
and engage them in, in that way. Always go for quick wins, small steps. People really need to be able to see at the beginning of a project, at, at the beginning of an improvement, that they can make those first steps. It can be quite intimidating. So nothing too challenging to start with. Always expect the unexpected side effects of change. You will always get them in, in uh, quality improvement in healthcare. And rather than seeing this as a failure, accept it as part of the way change is made in complex systems. Look out for those unexpected side effects, name them when they happen, and deal with them as they come. And frequent status checks are important. Keep up the momentum. You don't have to have long meetings to discuss progress. Short, sharp, here's some data, here's some feedback. How are we going? Do we need to make any course corrections to get where we need to go? Step four, are we heading in the right direction? Evaluating your progress and your outcomes. So it's really important as you go to keep restating your goals and objectives. It's so easy to get drift in these things. To start off by saying 15 minute wait times, that's what we're after. And then when it becomes hard, we say, oh, okay, I suppose 45 minute wait times will do. If 15 is it, 15 is it. And you have to keep restating those goals or it's very, very easy to get sidetracked when the going gets tough. Measure often, use qualitative and quantitative data. My, uh, my, my personal mantra on this is that graphs are great and stories are spectacular. You absolutely need both if you want to affect real and lasting change. Discuss the data with those involved and keep asking these questions. Are we doing what we said we would? So that's about are we implementing the strategies to create the change in our plan? So that's about process measures. Are we doing the things that we said we would do differently? And of course, is that taking us where we want to go? So these are your outcome measures. Are we getting the results we hoped we'd get? Are we moving closer to our ultimate goal of improvement for our consumers? And the key question to keep asking is, are our consumers better off for all of this activity and work and commitment that people are putting into it? As I said before, always expect to make course corrections if things aren't going well. Planes are constantly making course corrections. They don't change their destination, but they often have to change the way they get there mid-flight because all sorts of unexpected things happen and it's exactly the same in any change in your healthcare facility. Sustain the change by embedding it in systems and roles and spread the change, of course, once you've learned your lessons and things are going well. Of course, uh, sustainability and spread are topics for another day, but very important to think about those things right back when you're making your initial plan.